In this video, I'm going to go over making a C function that can count how many times a word occurs in a string. So because we're going to count how many times a word can occur in a string, we're going to include the string library here, just because it's got some helpful functions like string length to help us work with strings. And I'm also going to include std bool, which allows me to use Boolean values, which is something I'm actually going to use when I'm counting the occurrences of the word. So we're going to have to make a function that's going to return the number of occurrences of a word. So we'll say like int, and we'll say like word count here as the name of the function. And it's going to return an int because it's going to return the number of times the word occurs in the string. And then we'll have to accept two strings. So I'll have to say here car, and we'll say, maybe we'll say string here. And then we'll say car star, and we'll say word for the actual word itself. And then we'll have to provide a function definition down here before we call this call the function itself. And it's going to take in the string and a word. And to work with the string and the word, we're going to want to know the length of the string and the length of the word. So I'm going to say here int, and we'll say s l e n for string length, and we'll say s l e n is equal to s t r l e n string. So s t r l e n string length. That's a function that comes with the string dot h library there. And when I call it, it's going to give me the length of the string. And I can use that to write a loop that's going to go from zero until the length of the string. So we can check every position for an occurrence of the word. And then I'm going to get the word length. So I'll say like W L E N here, and I'll say S T R L E N word. And this will give me the length of the word. I'm going to want to use that too, because I'm going to have to have a loop that's going to be inside my other loop that is going to check for the actual occurrence of the word at the given position. So that's where we're going to have to come up with our little algorithm here to solve this problem. So our algorithm to solve this problem is we're going to have some string here and it's going to be, you know, a string with some words in it and we're going to have some word we're checking for. And maybe the word is let's say with. So if we want to check this string here for this word here, the way we're going to do this is we're going to check every position in the string for the word. And we're going to check to see if the word occurs starting at every position in the string. So our first loop that we're going to make, the outer loop, is going to be a loop that's going to start from here and go until the end of the string essentially, checking for occurrences of this word. Now we don't really have to go to the very end of the string. We can go to the end of the string subtracting the length of the word because once we've kind of gone past that point, like the word with here is, is four, you know, this is four characters in length, right? At this point in the string, once we're right here and there's three characters remaining in the string, we don't have to check for the word anymore, right? Because at that point, we know that the word can't even fit into the end of the string. So we don't have to check from this point on. So we're going to check the length of the string in terms of the we're going to be checking the length of the string in terms of checking for occurrences of the word, but we can actually stop once we've reached the length minus the, the word length, just because at that point we kind of know it's like, okay, we, we just can't fit the word in anymore. Um, and so the length of the string minus the word length um, uh, plus one, that'll be where we're going to stop. And then the, the, once we are checking each character in the string, we're going to be checking each position in the string, I should say. As we're checking each position, at each position, we're going to check for the word, which means that when we're at, say, this position here, we want to check, does this next character match W? Does this next character match I? Does this next character match T? Does this next character match H, right? And when we establish that they don't, at that point, we know we haven't found a match. If we have established that they do match the characters, here we have found a match and we want to increment some kind of counter. But what we're going to do is we're going to check each position in the string for this match. And so we're going to have to have an inner loop. We're going to have another loop that's going to check that at the given position, do we find this word there? And, you know, in this case here, you would find the word because if when we're at this position here, you know, W here is going to match the W in our word and I is going to match the I and T is going to match the T and H is going to match the H. And at that point, then we can say we've got a match. So our inner loop is going to check, do the word, do the, do the characters in our word here match the characters in this position in our string onwards. And we'll have to have some kind of counter then to keep track of 
how many occurrences we find. So I might as well have that set up here as well. We can say here int count is equal to zero. And this is going to keep track of how many times we find the word. So let's make our outer loop here. And we're going to say four. And we'll say here int i is equal to zero. That's going to be our counter. We're going to say i is less than. And then I'm going to leave that blank for a second. And I'm going to say i plus plus. So here's where I need to figure out where I need to stop searching for the word, right? And I could go all the way up until the length of the string. The thing is, like I said, there isn't really a point to doing that because once we once we have less string length remaining than the actual word length itself, the word can't even fit in there, right? So we can have the the kind of stop point, the the end point to check be the string length. So we can say like int the end of the end to check the, the the point to stop checking. We can say the end is going to be the length of the string minus the word length plus one. Because at that point, once we kind of say, here's the length of the string, subtract the length of the word plus one. At that point, we've reached a, a point in the string in terms of its position that we're currently checking that it, it makes no sense to, to check for the word there. So we can say here, end. Because at that point, there's just no room for the word anymore because it just doesn't, it's just not going to fit there anymore. So, okay, we've got that established here. And what we're going to now have is an inner loop. And the inner loop here, what it's going to do is it's going to look at this position here. Is the word at that position? So we're checking each position in the string with this outer loop. And this loop is checking at that position, can we find the word? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a bool to help me with this. I'm going to make a bool, and a bool is something that I can do when I include the standard Boolean library. So if I include this library here, I can make bool values where I can make true and false. And so I'm going to say here, bool, and I'm going to say word found is equal to true. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to find the word here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a while loop here. And I'm going to say, and actually I could just make it a, it doesn't really matter what I make. It could be a while loop or it could be a for loop here, but I'll make a while loop here. And I'm going to say, while J is less than the word length, I'm going to do some checking in here and I'm going to initialize J to zero. So I'm going to initialize J to zero and I'm going to go until the length of the word. So I'm going to increment J by one here each time. And I could do this as a while loop or I could do it as a for loop. So I could also do it like this. I could also say like for, you know, int J is equal to zero. J is less than W length, J plus plus. Doesn't really matter which one we use here. But what I'll do is I'll start J off at zero, go until the length of the word and increment J each time. And I'm going to check if the word at position J matches the string at position i plus j. So that way it's going to check each corresponding character in the word here against the corresponding character in the string at the position that we're currently checking. And so we'll we'll look we'll look we'll make it look like this. We're going to say here if if the word at j doesn't equal the string at i plus j, then at this point, we know that we haven't found the word because we found a mismatch. And we're going to say word found is equal to false. And at this point, there's no need to check the remaining characters in the word. So I could say break. And break is going to break me out of this for loop here. And it's going to go down here now in terms of execution. Now, if we check every position in the word, like j from zero to, to the length of the word, and we find that it does match the string. So we never have that this is true. We never have that there's not a match. Then that means that the word has been found in the string. So what we can do here is we can say if if word found, if word found is true, we're going to increment the count by one. So this is if we found the word, increment the count by one. Now this this part here could be a little tricky where it says if word at j doesn't equal string at i plus j. So word at j, we're going from zero to the word length. That's not too bad. But what about this string at i plus j? 
So the reason why it's string at i plus j is i is keeping track of our current position in the string, but j is keeping track of our current position in the word that we're checking. And we wanna kind of reach ahead in the string at our current position by the position in the word that we're currently checking. So like if, if I'm at this position in the string here, I, and I've now wanna check to see if the word with is at this position here, I need to look at like I plus one, I plus two, I plus three, up until you know we've reached the length of the word here, right? And, and what we're doing here is we're using J to increment through the word. That's why J is going up until the, up until the word length. And we're using I to keep track of our position in the string. So when I add together I plus J, what I'm doing is I'm looping over the word and I'm checking in my string here at position I plus position J, does this character match the corresponding character we would expect in the word? And so, you know, I is basically our position in the string, J is our position in the word, and when we add them together, we get the character that we want to check against the character in the word string here that we've got. And if we ever find that the word found is true because we never found a mismatch, then we increment the count. And so then we can just re return the count at the end of this, and, and that should then give us the, the count of the number of times the, the, the word occurs in the string there. So let's actually test this function out now. We can say here like car and we'll say here star s maybe is equal to and we can give a string here. So I could say car star s is equal to and I'll say and I could do it like this too. I could say car s open bracket close bracket same same idea. And I could say um, it is in this string once. And we're going to check for the word it in this string. And I'm going to say that this is going to be a case uh, sensitive check, which means that the, sensitive, the, the, the case of the word matters. So if I'm going to check for it in this string, then I'm going to check for capital I, capital T, because we're just checking to see if there's an exact match. We're not making it case insensitive where the case of the letters doesn't matter. So we'll say here care, and we'll say here W for our word, and I'll say it. And I wanna check how many times it occurs in the string, and it should occur in the string once. So now we'll, we'll call the function here, and we'll say here um, int result is equal to word count S and W. And we'll print out the result. So we'll say printf result percent D slash N. And we expect that the word will be found in that string once. So let's give this a try here. So we run it, we compile it, and we get result one. So that's a good that's a good test there. We're happy with that. Now we could give another test here. We could say here, we could give another uh, set of test data here. Let's give another try here. We'll say here car, and I'm gonna just call this one, let's call it like S2 and S2. And we'll, we'll give a, a different case here. We've got the, the word in there more than once. So we'll say um, this is in, in, in the word. And we'll just say that doesn't totally make sense as a sentence, but we've got in there, in now, in there uh, three times, right? So in is in there three times. And if I put in and I, I check for the result now, and we'll call this, uh, maybe we'll call it result two and result two here. And we'll call it, we'll call it with S2 and W2 here. Now I'm going to check for the word in in this string. And I expect it to be in there three times. You can see it's in there three times by the, the highlighting there. So let's give this a shot here and see what happens here. And I get that in is in there three times. Now, just as one more test, what if I put is, what if I put is, if I put is, it's going to be in there twice because is is technically included in this, right? And our program isn't doing something to maybe delineate words by using the spaces or something like that to delineate individual words. But we're going to say that this counts as a word as a word match. We're going to say that this, this does actually count. So if I put an is, I actually expect it to come up twice. And let's just give this a try just to see. And we get two. And so we've made a function now that will, you know, check for the number of occurrences of a word in a string. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.